Okay, so today I'd like to welcome you guys to the third installment of this little mini-series. We're all basically showing off the vintage and rare paints that I've collected over the years. Most of these are for sale. Some of them will be in my personal collection. I'll indicate whether it's for sale or if it's part of my personal collection. So first up, I'm jumping right off in the deep end. This is something I showed off in my last video. This would be my handmade Genuine Mummy Brown. And the reason I'm showing it off again is because I got this nice vintage mini coffin to hold the paint tube. So this mini coffin here I got from Ukraine just a few months ago. And it's made out of wood. You can see it has some wear on it. It's from the mid 20th century. So I'd say between 1930 and 1950. That's the estimation. At least that's what the uh, seller seemed to think. So I'm just going to open this up. Opens up on hinges. And then there you can see there's the tube that I made myself. And made. There's a genuine swatch on the outside of it. There's my signature. Title. You know, it says the ingredients and everything. So inside is also a genuine linen for a mummy. And there you can see some of the wear on the actual box itself. If you'd like to know more about how I made this, how I obtained it, and the whole history of Mummy Brown, you can check out my book. I have a copy of it here. So I have the physical copy. Unfortunately, I don't distribute these myself. They're print-on-demand. I have a link down below where you can buy these. This is the uh, linen. It's a linen book, but it has a uh, dust jacket. There's some vintage pictures on the inlays of Mummy Brown Genuine being made. And then obviously inside the book is all the details, how I got it, all my testing and everything. So in my eBay shop, I do also have a version of my book. This would be a hand-painted USB stick. So you would get my book on here. And obviously you'd have to plug it into your computer. You know, there's a there's a mobile version on here which you can get onto your computer then send to mobile as well. So this is painted, yeah, this is hand painted by me with, uh, let's see here, four of my uh, imitation colors. So you got my Spinel Neutral, you got my Cerusite Hue, you have my Emerald Green Hue, and my Mummy Brown Hue. Skull on the front and an Egyptian Ankh on the back. Painted just like a book. Just plug it into your computer and then you can view it. We got Genuine Indian Yellow. So I have a few different samples of this. So here I have a French sample. And this tube is actually still soft. Let me show you. You can see I can squeeze the tube. So it still has some give to it. So this is obviously not going to be for sale. This is personal collection item of mine. I have a Windsor & Newton Genuine Indian Yellow that will be for sale. The unfortunate thing about this one is it's only for collection purposes because the tube is completely dried. You can see some of the oil at the top here has leaked out. And I know this one is genuine because I've owned vintage Indian Yellow hues and they usually say Indian Yellow 2 or they say Indian Yellow and below it in smaller text it's going to say coal tar or something like that to indicate that it's a hue usually made from tartrazine which is a a pigment that still some people use today as an Indian Yellow substitute. So I'm very confident and the collection that I, I actually bought that contained this was very old so very confident about this. Unfortunately it's only for viewing you can see there it has a little dragon on the side, which also indicates it's an older tube. So there you go, that's that one. And I have two Indian Yellow watercolors here. I'm not sure the exact brand of these, but they're essentially full pans. 
So there's one. Here's the other one. This one's a little bit harder to read. But again, not sure of the brand of these. These are both for sale as well. Just go to my shop. If you're watching this years from now, obviously these are probably all going to be sold other than the personal collection items. But if you're just watching it fresh, then yeah. What if I say it's for sale? It's in my shop. So here is samples of Genuine Indian Yellow. This, these are for sale as well. Uh, so these to the left are watercolor samples from, I believe, four different brands. I have it in my description. And then this one is one oil uh, sample from my personal collection tube. So the, overall, this is like five or six, four, yeah, between four and six uh, different brands. I have it listed in my description. Here's a nice little trio of three vintage Roberson & Co. tubes. One of these has been featured in both of my previous videos. Uh, the reason I'm showing it again is because I found two other tubes that are, it's it looks like from the same uh, release as this one. So there, obviously that's the emerald green, the very poisonous, beautiful uh, emerald green. That one's still soft. Uh, got a vermilion here. Perfect looking tube. You know, this is the very toxic uh, mercury uh, based red very beautiful tube unfortunately it is very it's fully dry you won't be able to use that one and you got a flake white which is the exterior is a little bit beat up but the paint is still soft inside so these three are all for sale as a set I'm not selling them separately they're selling as a set so those are all in my shop three toxic colors three historical one no longer made and two not made by very many companies all around they'd be beautiful as a set for a collector or someone who wants to do minimal testing on these two I got a few vintage watercolor gems here for you we're gonna start off with a Windsor & Newton Ultramarine Ash Blue, so genuine lapis lazuli. I'm, I'm assuming this is from around the 50s or 60s, something like that. It is a Series 5, let's see here. Yeah, series 5, made in England. This has not been opened. The exterior is a little bit, you know, scuffed up, but you know, other than that, hasn't been opened, hasn't been used, and not that many companies make it, especially uh, as a watercolor pan like this, and this hasn't been opened. Like I said, very expensive color, no matter how you go. This is for sale. And here we go, we got a King's Yellow. This is made by, let's see what company was it made by, Riddles. Very hard to find. So this is synthetic uh, orpiment. I shouldn't be handling these without gloves, but that's how it goes. Uh, so there you go. King's Yellow synthetic orpiment for sale as well. And you got a genuine emerald green watercolor cake. Not sure of the brand of this. This is the same brand as the Indian Yellow I showed earlier. This is for sale as well. English Vermilion by DeVoe. This is an American company. Tube is still soft. I believe this to be genuine vermilion. And the reason I say that is they also released a vermilion called American Vermilion. And when I was looking in an old catalog, the American Vermilion was... A cheaper version so I'm assuming that one was the imitation or hue and the English vermilion was the genuine I can't remember if they had a Chinese vermilion in their catalog as well but they had a few different types of vermilion I believe English vermilion was one of the real versions so this is for sale as well in my shop one other interesting thing I have here is Genuine Ivory Black Pigment. This isn't vintage, so technically this is a, a little bit of a 
break away from the theme of the video, but there you go. This is available as part of a set of rare pigments uh, for sale in my shop. It ends up making, think about a modern ivory black, which is technically bone black, but a little bit warmer. You know, I'm, my imitation that I make reflects this. So here is a, another personal collection item I have here. This would be Caput Mortem Deep. So this would be a deep violet color. This is made out of natural iron oxide, usually from Eastern Europe. You can see on the side, thoroughly purified natural iron oxide. And interestingly enough, Caput Mortem uh, came in a few different shades because it was an iron oxide based pigment. A lot of people think it has something to do with Mummy Brown and really it got its name because it tends to look like a bruised fr uh, flesh color, at least the violet leaning versions of this color. There are a few that I've seen that are more warm and like sienna looking, but uh, I generally consider the violet versions to be a better representation because it they look more like bruised flesh or something like that, which would relate it to Mummy Brown. Okay, so I have a few acrylic singles for you. These aren't terribly vintage, uh, but these are both rare colors, and one of them I'd consider vintage. So here we have, this one's an old Holland color, acrylic, and it comes in an original box. Different color, but it's an original box. Hooker's Green Deep Extra, but the actual color is manganese blue. This would be genuine. It's a large 60 milliliter tube, soft, either barely used or not used at all. You can see on the back, let's see here, it says the pigment here. Might not be able to see it, but barium meganate, uh, pigment blue 33. That's the swatch on the outside, genuine. So there you go, beautiful. I'd consider this, this is probably 90s, early 2000s, something like that. Maybe 80s, I don't know. I'd say probably 90s early 2000s most likely. So this one's not vintage technically. This is a uh, I think 2019 or recent uh, Yinman Blue acrylic. Uh, the only reason I'm showing this off is because it's a rare color and someday it'll be vintage. This is this is limited edition here. Shrink. There you go. I'll consider this part of my personal collection. I just really want to see how well this color holds up over time to be honest as a new blue as well as a uh, an acrylic paint I'd like to see how it holds up over time I have sampled it a few times and uh, looking forward to opening it back up maybe 10 20 30 years from now and just see how it holds up both the binder as well as the pigment five uh, vintage French paints from Armand Drone. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that right. I'm probably not. Uh, so we have a cadmium green, an ultramarine blue light, a Prussian blue, I believe. Let's see here. Yeah, Prussian blue. A chrome yellow. This is the probably the gem of the lot here. And some type of earth color. I want to say it's a sienna or something like that. So, all soft, but they all have some wear on the tubes, obviously. They are all for sale. Um, you know, caps are probably stuck on most of these. These are, these are just interesting for the fact that they are made by someone who is a painter as well as a paint maker. I can relate to that because, you know, as well as making paint, I also paint myself so he was a short-lived brand in the early 20th century I'd say roughly between the 20s to the 50s I believe it was something around those that kind of time frame so interesting little find it wasn't a long lasted brand these are the same brand as the Indian yellow that I showed earlier uh, these are for sale the Indian yellow is not so now that I've showed off all those singles I'm going to show off some sets and I'm only really going to be focusing on the key stuff in the sets rather than showing off everything individually 
So I'm just going to pluck one of these tubes here as a example. So this is what some of the old Winsor & Newton tubes look like. This is, they're usually, some of them were long and skinny, but these are, there's also a few really old ones that are um, short and kind of fat. So there you see Winsor & Newton. It's kind of obscured what this is. Uh, let's see here, what is that? That's kind of hard to read. Either way, that's what some of the really old tubes look like. You got some brushes in there. You got this opening up like that. One nice uh, thing I want to show off here is this fresh, unused uh, linseed oil bottle. You see the Dragon logos on there. Those automatically mean it's older, usually. Um, if it has those red Dragon imprints, the Windsor Newton. You can see untouched, unopened. Look at that. Beautiful. Could still be used. And let me see if I can find out some gems here to show you. There are a few in here. These are all Windsor and Newton. Let's see here. Here's one. So we got a, a rose matter there. Genuine rose matter. You can see some of it there at the top. And we have we have a few different matter colors in here. We got a rose door. And we have a scarlet matter. So beautiful set. A lot of stuff in here. This is for sale as well. This sells as a full set, box included. Okay, now to show off the last thing of my current collection. This one is also going to be for sale. So it opens up. You got a nice palette there. You got some notes from the previous owner in there. I won't dig too much into that because this is mostly about vintage paint rather than accessories. So here, these are American. Most of the stuff I end up getting is British or European, but I, I have a decent amount of American stuff in here too that I end up picking up. So here's a old Kremnitz White. I'm not sure the brand name on that one. This one is, let's see here, Boston, Chicago, and I don't know what the, I think New York, probably New York, Boston, and Chicago. This one's completely dry. Um, you got, you know, just a variety of colors. And this lifts out this tray. And there's a whole other section of colors down in here. Including a couple beauties. Let me just show you. I'll just pop these up here. A couple gems, which make this a very desirable set for a collector or serious painter. So two genuine Kremnitz whites by DeVoe and Reynolds. These are very old too. You can just see by the design of the tubes, the label design, everything. And these are still pliable. They're not like totally soft, but they are pliable. So for sure, if you're going to squeeze these out, you will get paint out of them. And the caps do come off on these. Both of these are Kremnitz White. The one on the left is a little bit less legible, but you can still see it. And the one on the right is a very good condition. Now, like I said, both of these are full, so, uh, pliable, and the caps come off. Beautiful caps and label design as always for these vintage paints. And I'll show, I'll show off just a few more of these. So earlier I was mentioning about the English Vermilion. So here you have the American Vermilion. So the American Vermilion was a cheaper one. So I believe that one was the imitation one. And again, for reference, here is the English Vermilion, same company. So I'll just point off two more uh, colors in here. 
same color, different brand, really. So let's see here. We got two emerald greens in this set, genuine. So very beautiful toxic arsenic emerald green. One on the left was made by uh, Weber, and the one on the right is made by DeVoe. The Weber is soft, the DeVoe is hard. So beautiful color, beautiful for a collection. Rare, you know, not made anymore. And then there's a variety of other colors in here that are a combination of DeVoe and Weber. A couple more beautiful things in here to point out. This I thought was stunning. So you got a Weber picture var or mastic picture varnish. So this is by Weber. Corked. It looks untouched, like you just grabbed this off a 1920s or 30s shelf, to be honest has instructions there on the side and talks about it and on the back it has this beautiful uh, emboldened uh, Weber & Co and the Sphinx which is part of their logo and it says Philadelphia so just this would be beautiful just as a display piece but obviously you could still use it you know untouched just awesome you got a pale gold brilliant powder for Venus it says it's not really paint but I figured I'd just mention it you got some pencils and stuff in here and you have a nice vintage palette knife wooden handle metal blade looks like it has some flake white or something on there and beautiful like I said if you'd like to purchase any of this stuff most of it's for sale uh, you just go to the my eBay shop in the link below if you're interested in this kind of stuff follow my shop you know i sell this stuff year round so hopefully you enjoyed this and yeah i'll see you in my shop